If you're struggling in landing your thrusts, well, this is the video for you. Hello Kimo friends and welcome to this new video. So today we are going to give a look to 10 different tips to improve your thrusting. Landing a simple thrust is actually kind of complex simply because it is a simple action, it is not a compound one, and because of this there are not other components which, for example, steal the attention of your opponent, creating the time to land it. So you have to be precise and do everything correctly and properly. So without further chats, let's check these 10 tips. The first advice is understand proper thrusting distance and reach it while you are inspiring. So now you may think, oh, this advice is obvious, I will skip and check the second one. Well, actually this thing is obvious, but it is also the most common error that you can find around. I do it, everyone does it. So, uh, reaching proper thrusting distance, what it means? It means that you have to train, of course, in your gym, with your training partners, etc., and understand the distance at which you can reliably, more or less, thrust at the opponent, with the opponent struggling to parry your action. So, once you understand your, more or less, reliable thrusting distance, you can bring it in sparring. At that point, you just have to reach it in a sneaky way or in a fast way and from that position you can try and land your action. So first advice, try to reach correct thrusting distance and then land your action. The second advice is to fully extend your arms. Now another obvious advice, right? Well, this is the second tip simply because it is the second most common error that we find around. To not fully extend the arms is pretty common. Now, generally speaking, people are not aware of it, so they are not aware that of the fact they are not fully extending their arms uh, while uh, uh, landing the action. They think they are, but they are not. So, the second most important thing that you have to do is check if you are fully extending your arms while thrusting. Once you have full extension of your arms, you are, of course, expressing maximum reach which is the most, one of the most important component of your thrusting action. So, second tip, fully extend your arms. So the third advice is arms first, feet after. You have probably already heard this kind of advice because it is a very good one. It is a sequence of movement, the proper sequence of movement in which you should land your attacks. But it is not the complete advice. It should be you should go arms first, feet after, when you reach your proper thrusting distance, or attacking distance in this case, broadly speaking. So, why this sentence is complete and uh, only arms first, feet after not? Simply because if you start extending your arms and try to reach the opponent at the wrong distance, so from too far away, for the opponent it's easier to parry your actions. Instead, if you reach proper thrusting distance and you follow this sequence of movement, you take advantage from it and you land your actions in a better way. So, achieve proper thrusting distance and then follow the proper sequence, arms first, feet after. So why you have to follow this kind of uh, sequence of movements? Well, first of all, because our brain is not very good at catching tiny movements compared to big ones. So if we extend our, the tiniest, part of our body first, it is harder to catch uh, by the opponent's brain. Instead, if uh, you move your body first, it is a very big movement, easy to scout, and so for the opponent it is easier to parry the action. Second, because you create a good structure by presenting the strong part of your blade to the weak part of the opponent. This, of course, especially when you are already in a bind. So you extend your arms, you bring your forte, your strong of the blade forward, and you catch the weak of the opponent, gaining good degrees to land your thrust properly. So, again, arms first, feet after, when you reach proper thrusting distance. The fourth tip is about, again, awareness. So you have to be aware if you are in a bind or not. This from the outside, if you watch a sparring, may seem obvious because like it's easy to see and it feels easy to feel actually, right? You feel if you are in a bind or not. But when you are in fighting, when you are fighting, it's not really hard to understand and be aware of even simple things. Sometimes you are thinking about a thousand different 
uh, things in your mind, you are preparing a plan, you have to be aware if the opponent is attacking or not, whatever. So it's not a, an easy thing to do. So try to be aware if you are in a bind or not, simply because this changes dramatically the things that you have to do to land your action properly. And we will see this in the next couple of advices. Fifth advice, if you are in a bind, first of all, gain degrees and then land your thrust. So while talking about gaining degrees, people think about gaining space, which is actually correct in a sense. But what they tend to do sometimes is to push aside the opponent blade while being in the same week on week, for example, generally speaking, kind of bind. This kind of thing doesn't achieve a better leverage. It just pushes aside the blade of the opponent and uh, doesn't achieve any advantage while doing so. Yes, you have space, but when you start thrusting, the opponent finds relatively easy, I will say, to parry your action. Instead, you have to bring a better degree of your sword in connection with the opponent's uh, blade. So, for example, medio on weak is a good bind to reach before landing a thrust. When you have to do it, when you reach proper thrusting distance, so advice one, remember. So, while reaching proper thrusting distance, at the same time, put your medio on the opponent weak and then, while gaining degrees, land your action. Number six, first of all, touch the opponent and then oppose your blade. Now, this is extremely useful when you are thrusting out of the bind. It is useful because you want, first of all, to express maximum reach, as we have said in the second advice, to hit the opponent. Hitting the opponent is, generally speaking, be it in a duel, uh, in a tournament or whatever, the most important things to do. Simply because it is the thing that have the highest degree of possibility to stop the opponent from attacking you. So if you hurt the opponent, chances that it will stop fighting with you. And this is of course true in a tournament because the referee will say stop or whatever. So, first of all, achieve maximum reach. Increase the chance of hitting the opponent. And only then, when you touch the opponent, hurt the opponent, oppose your blade so to defend yourself. You have of course to take in consideration where the opponent is starting from. So for example, if the opponent starts in a posta di donna slash bomb tag, you will touch first and then oppose in a high position. If the opponent is in porta di ferro, for example, you will touch the opponent and then oppose lower. It may also be useful to direct your thrust in a way which takes this in consideration uh, in the first place. So, if the opponent is in a high guard, your thrust will be slightly higher, for example, to the neck. If the opponent has a low guard position, you can just aim for the lower chest of more or less the belly of your opponent and then oppose your blade. So, advice number six, touch first, oppose after when you start your actions from out of the bind. Advice number seven is try to use the times that the opponent gives you to land your action. So, the opponent may waste many times doing some kind of binding actions which are not meaningful or whatever. You can use many, many times at your advantage if the opponent is doing some kind of error. But here I am mainly talking about actions which can be meaningful, meaningful for the opponent too. For example, advancing toward you to create their own action, their own attacking action. You can take advantage of this kind of movement and steal that time to land your own action. Especially this one, because if the opponent is approaching you, is stepping toward you, is doing part of the job. So if uh, the opponent approaches you, you approach the opponent, you basically do go double the speed. So advice number seven, try to steal the opponent's times and use them at your advantage. Tip number eight, do not tense up before landing your action. Now, this is really important for a variety of motivations. The first and most important one is that if you are tense, you already tense up, you are not prepared to land your action. Every time we move, we pass from a state of relaxation in our muscles to a state of tension. So we have to tense up to move. But if we tense up before, starting our action, what happens is that we are already tense, our muscles have to first of all relax 
and then they have to tense up to do the movement. So we need uh, almost double the time to do the same kind of action. So this is the main motivation. The second motivation is because the opponent sees it. So if the opponent sees that you are kind of tense, maybe in the best case scenario, if the opponent is not really experienced, may think that you are ready to do something. And anyway, this makes him prepared to receive your action. In the worst case scenario, the opponent is pretty experienced and see that you are just too tense and can even attack taking uh, advantage of this kind of situation. Simply because if you are too tense, you are not a threat. You will move slowly and you are not really a threat. So uh, the opponent may even think about hitting you first. So advice number eight, do not tense up before starting with your action. Advice number nine is use confusing items to lend your actions, or better, to hide your action. So if you, for example, move forward and backward in a kind of easy to understand the rhythm, and at a sudden, instead of moving backward, forward, backward, forward, you just do backward, forward, backward, forward, and you start your action. Well, this is a very good way to hide your action behind some kind of rhythm. You can hide it in different ways, using a more complex footwork schemes. But this is the most important thing. You can hide your action in the middle of different movements, different rhythms. You can also involve your blade, your arms, and uh, move the uh, hands uh, forward and backward, side by side, to steal the attention of your opponent. So, tip number nine, use different rhythms to hide your action. Tip number 10, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Sometimes you can do everything in the perfect way. You can use uh, special rhythms to hide your action. You can extend your arm properly. You can uh, use the sequence of motion in the proper way. Arm first, feet after but it doesn't work. It simply doesn't work simply because the opponent is prepared to receive that kind of action. So in this case, you have to be aware of it. You don't have to keep going for the same action. Even if you are in training, you are training your thrust, you want to land your thrust so much in sparring because you learn all these kind of important tips to improve it. But your opponent is prepared for it. You try to land it 10 times and uh, it, can, it can't work, it simply can't work. So change your action, don't go for the thrust, do something else, or use your thrust in a compound way to land something else. So you can, uh, for example, use your thrust as a feint, feint your thrust, and then land another action. For example, Arovesso Fendente. So remember, you can't always use this kind of action. It is not that proper technique always achieve a victory, right? The opponent may simply be aware of it. The opponent uh, already knows what you're going to do, simply because they know you or they have seen you landing 10 thrusts and they are now finally prepared to receive it. So sometimes you simply can't land a certain action. In this case, the thrust. Be aware of it, change your plan. So here we are. 10 different tips to improve your thrusts or to not use your thrust when it is not the correct time, remember. <laughs> so, thanks for watching people as always. Remember that if you want to support my channel, you can find uh, the link to my Patreon page in the video description. And if you want to make me a favor, um, the most of you are not subscribed to the channel, actually the 60% of you. So if you want to uh, do me a favor, just click the subscribe button, leave a sub, and you will help me uh, grow up this channel. So, again, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.